Spoilers for the season finale of X-Men 97. If you've not yet watched that episode, be sure to watch that. Then come back and check this out. What's up, everybody? It's Bo here with another X-Men 97 TV talk. Man, what an incredible season we got here. I've said it before. I'll probably say it again, but this was not a series that I was just absolutely looking forward to. It was one going into that I was kind of nervous. We haven't exactly been dealing with the top tier content coming from the MCU post Endgame. I mean, don't get me wrong. There have been some phenomenal hits, right? Guardians Volume 3, Spider-Man No Way Home, Loki, just to name a few. And there have been others. But broadly speaking, there's been more misses than hits. And so to touch something as sacred as the X-Men 90s cartoon... To pick that ball back up, I mean, it's a bold move. I mean, there's just no two ways about it. It absolutely is. And I believe at this point, it's safe to say the broad consensus is they have done an absolutely astonishingly good job at staying true to the spirit of the original series while also bringing in elements and stories from the comics that never quite made it to that cartoon or, in most cases, were actually written after the cartoon was actually released. A lot of different themes and concepts were kind of blended together and done so in just this incredible way. And the characters themselves, for the most part, felt like the natural progression of the characters that we knew from the 90s series. Now, in the not-so-distant future, I will definitely be doing kind of like a top three in that regard in terms of what characters they really got right and what characters maybe they might have missed the mark on. But given that the season finale has just concluded, the main thing I want to talk about right now is... Where's Morph and Wolverine? So the penultimate episode, obviously Wolverine is going through his, you know, uh, invasive surgery? Dude's whole skeleton is getting yanked out by Magneto, and in the process, it almost kills him. Scott is actually at his bedside, basically saying, don't let Gene down, you gotta, like, live through this, this is what you do, you heal, you're the best there is at what you do, and what you do is heal, but technically what he does isn't very nice, but that's that's neither here nor there. Either way, he's on the table, Morph is with them, the other X-Men are out dealing with everything that, you know, they're dealing with, and Morph and Wolverine, I mean, all season long, uh, something, something going on there. I mean, like, I'm not the only one who noticed that, right? Like, something, something kind of seems to be going on there. Now, obviously, X-Men 97 is definitely not shying away from unhealthy relationships. And the concept of a morph Wolverine relationship would be not great. In the original series, they were very close. They were friends. Wolverine, in particular, is impacted heavily at Morph's supposed death, constantly referring to him as the only one that could make him laugh. There's a bond there. There's a closeness. But romantically, this particular version of Wolverine is still very much pining after Jean. In fact, has been for like, I don't know, five plus years. And with Morph coming back, if Morph is just kind of transforming into Jean so that they can hook up with Wolverine, I don't know. It almost feels like Wolverine's kind of using his friend to deal with his own stuff. And Morph has been through a lot, okay? Like, they kind of really do them a disservice in this season because so much of Morph's background has to do with Sinister and the torture and abuse and the control that was applied to him. And to have Sinister as such a kind of a major player throughout the season and not lean into the Morph of it all was, I don't know, it just seemed like a huge disservice. Morph's just kind of here, all right? It's like, they're just, they're just there. But given the fact that at the end of this episode, we know where everybody else is, but we don't know where Morph and Wolverine are, I wonder if we're going to be setting up Morph and Wolverine, be it their two characters or potentially their relationship, I don't know, as kind of a major storyline in season two. That's just my theory. Where they are in time, who knows? At this moment, my speculation is that they're probably somewhere in the timeline very different from the other two teams. But in terms of those other two teams, we've got Gene and Scott have headed off to the future where they are finding a young version of their son. Now, in the comic books, Gene and Scott actually did get a chance to raise Cable, but they did so under an alias. Now, given the fact that they instantly kind of introduced themselves as Cyclops and Gene, or maybe they said Scott and Gene, I can't exactly remember. I just, I just watched the episode, y'all. But I know they weren't instantly using these aliases. So whether or not they decide to do so is going to be very interesting to see. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, we could very much pick up in season two with Gene and Cyclops having kind of this, this time with Nathan to be his parents. But when it's time to go back to the present, maybe Gene doing a little, you know, snip snip in his brain, kind of removing those memories 
or twisting them so that he remembers being raised by this couple for a time and maybe the names get muddled at that point. I don't know. It'll be very interesting to see, but my guess is that's what we're going to experience with the Jean Grey plotline next season. Or at least in the season opener. I mean, I, I doubt we're going to get a full season of, you know, them taking him to Montessori school on the moon or wherever they are. But everybody else, they're in the past and they're chilling out with a young and up and coming apocalypse. That's right. This dude right here. Now, I am very excited for this because this continues something that we've seen throughout 97 and that's closing time loops while also ripping them right back open. It's one of the best things about X-Men 97 is that it's been so good to pick up little threads that were left dangling in the original series and tie them up in a nice little bow only to snip them and rip them up again. But hey, that's peak X-Men right there. And for me, as someone who admittedly was not a big reader of the comics back in the day, I have often looked to external media to give me the explanation for who Apocalypse is. I remember when he showed up in Evolution. I remember, obviously when Poe Dameron was Apocalypse and the big purple mean guy. But frankly, I've always wanted more of a deep exploration of who the 90s cartoon series Apocalypse is. For one thing, I trust it more to be true and faithful to the spirit of what was in the source material. But on the other hand, he was just, he was such a major player. I mean, Apocalypse shows up within the first, what, five episodes of the first season of X-Men? And at that point, like, like even Mystique is like his henchwoman. Like, you know what I mean? Like he's, he's got the big bads are already basically serving him. And speaking of Apocalypse, we got the tease that many of us thought was probably coming. It's interesting that the creators of this season talked about how at the time, there was a lot of discussion about who would die in Genosha. Now, that's been presented to us in such a way that they didn't know that Gambit would be the one to be, you know, the big X-Men death. But in all reality, they killed so many people in Genosha, they could technically be, have been talking about anybody. Look, what X-Men hasn't died and come back to life? But with Gambit specifically, I remember as a kid being told that he became, for a time anyway, one of the four horsemen of Apocalypse. In fact, he became Death, taking Angel's place. I've always thought that was wild. I've never actually read that story, and I would love to experience it. As much as I really, you know, I did a whole video on the impact of, you know, losing Gambit and experiencing his death, but I acknowledged even in that that we're probably going to see him again in some capacity. If this is it, I'm here for it. Now, the one last thing that I'll make mention of before wrapping up here is that in this season, we also got a lot of teases to an X-Men versus Avengers. Even the scene at the very, you know, tail end here where Steve and Tony are chilling out in the war room and they're, you know, basically sitting there being totally fine with the United States government nuking the X-Men. I mean, like that, that happened. We're, that might actually have to be a whole separate video because mm. like X-Men versus Avengers is coming. Like that's, that's happening. It's gotta be happening in season two or in a season three, if they're going to really stretch it out. But I don't know. These are just my thoughts in terms of where they may take season two. I'm very curious to hear yours. What do you think is going to happen? Where do you think Morph and Wolverine are? Put it in the comments. Let's talk about it.